We're live. We're alive. We are not dead. We are here in the flesh, in the sweat. Apparently, they fixed our air conditioning, but it's still hot as shit in here, so it feels like they didn't actually fix. It's been a long day. It's been a long night. How we doing? We're doing a 12-team underdog best ball stream. Damn, that's a rhyme. How many times have I said that rhyme in my life? I just don't know. Picking from the 107. Draft starts in 10 seconds. This is 18 rounds, starting one quarterback. Last week, we did a super flex draft. Now we're doing a one quarterback draft, so underdog has any type of league that you are preparing for, okay? If you're in a one quarterback or in a super flex, this will be the single best way to get you prepared for your fantasy league come end of August, come September, which is going to rapidly be approaching, okay? Get on underdog, come draft with us. Every draft is at least $3, meaning every draft is uh, actually serious and everyone takes it serious. And if you win, you come back and you don't have to set your lineup throughout the year. It's beautiful. That's the beautiful part about best ball, okay? So join us on underdog, promo code BDGE. We'll get you a 100% deposit match your yeah, yeah. comments up on the screen where you at you know where we're at minimize you a little bit oh we're on the clock at the 107 now people are scared of stefan Diggs. apparently i guess 107 is kind of the sweet spot for Diggs. we'll uh we'll bite here we'll bite on diggy we do start three wide receivers in this draft two running backs one quarterback one tight end so we do want to have a nice little plethora of uh wide receivers to choose from with our lineup stop cropping to fill there you go that's perfect where you at we're in europe baby let's get it let's get it so after Diggs, we have aj brown we have amar Ossie brown we have cd lamb we have austin eckler so Diggs is my favorite there i think uh the whole Diggs being problematic at um with with buffalo right now is is a bit overblown they will figure it out him and josh allen are homies josh allen doesn't really have anyone else to throw to besides him and the god don kincaid I'm not nervous about Diggs whatsoever. I think he's still just as good of a pure wide receiver as just about anybody in the league and nothing about last year. Said that he won't be again. And a lot of the problems from Josh Allen last year were uh, uh, with his elbow. If you look at the splits between when he fucked up his elbow and the rest of the year, you'll see a clear correlation between that and uh, Stefan Diggs's fall off. Not even fall off. Like he was still fine, but obviously he was starting off the year dominant. We thought we had like the wide receiver one overall for the first, you know, four, six, eight weeks of the season, which he was. And then Josh Allen's elbow fell off and uh, the rest. We are three picks away after CD Lamb at the 110. We had Eckler, Bijan, Garrett Wilson, Nick Chubb, Jalen Waddle at the 2 3, and Chris Olave at the 2 4. I'm getting more and more happy with these elite running back options in the middle of the second, third. So Jonathan Taylor goes off at the 2 5. And I'm going to be honest, man, I was doing some research on just like elite running backs over the last 10 years. And I'll, I'll let y'all in on some on some research right now. I'm going to take Saquon here, you know, and you say, and, and what's the point of putting it in discord if you're not doing it with the discord members because only the discord members are here in the chat with me like you guys are the only one i'm hanging out with right now. if you're not in the discord you don't get in the live chat um because i'm going to strip this kind of edit it and re-upload it but only y'all can actually hang out with me so if you're out there join our discord you can get into the live streams with them so i was looking back over the last i think it was like 13 14 years whatever the last like 21 running backs that have averaged over 20 fantasy points per game right so those are like the league winning the league winning types of running and there are a lot of commonalities between guys who average over 20 points per game most of them end up catching somewhere between like 70 and 100 passes right it's the easiest way to be an elite running back is to be able to catch a lot of passes. the way that you end up being an elite running back if you do not catch a lot of pass is by having a really fucking good offensive line and a really good off so you need to have one of those things it was somewhere in the range of um of the dudes who didn't catch at least like 60 passes i want to say like 80 percent of them was 80 uh, percent of them had an offensive line that ranked within like the top six of run blocking line i'm nervous about Taylor this year just in terms of his upside because you have to draft him as like the rb2 three in underdog or just draft in general let me see where he went one two th okay he was he was the five well i'm fucking exaggerating a little bit but still i i not sure i see a realistic um upside case for taylor right now because their offensive line kind of went to shit last year and we don't know what their offense is going he'll still be fine but I almost feel like I would rather err on the side of guys with a little more upside if I'm using a pick in the early second round, mid-second round on a running back because I don't know if he has pass-catching ability. I don't know if he has a strong offensive line. I don't know if he has a strong offense. So all those things make me a little bit weary of him where he's getting picked. Bryce Young, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Incorrect. There's already, The award has already been given out to an Atlanta Falcon. 
and we are almost up at 3-7, and we see Brees Hall is still available, and do you know why Brees Hall is still available? Because Dalvin Cook is going to the Jets. Do you know who told you about Dalvin Cook to the Jets first? Don't play with me. You know who it was. Josh Allen, you son of a bitch, went off the board first. Really wanted to get that Allen dig stack, but we'll see how it falls. So a lot of people are, are nervous about Saquon and Josh Jacobs, you know, in their contract situation. And I think it's worth um, being a little bit nervous about. I think Josh Jacobs is the most realistic one to sit out because he is uh, probably not really going to get another contract unless he really goes. He, he's really got to go for it right now. You know what I mean? Because he's like getting up there in age a little bit and he doesn't feel like a guy that teams would pay up for like you have to be some sort of you got i feel like have to have like uh, some elite traits and he doesn't really have all that being said let me take both contract boys right they don't hold out daquan josh jacobs pretty sexy combo at running back that's a combined 650 touch and i don't think like say josh jacobs plays none of these wide receivers are anywhere near as valuable as a dude like josh jacobs in your lineup and we start two running backs so i don't really have to touch his position again for a we've got a dynasty question pick a side dynasty full ppr so we've got Devonte adams and debo or ridley mike williams and a 2024 first interesting do we know where the uh where the first is projected do we have like an early a mid uh, a late round pick my initial reaction to this would be Devontae and Debo. Uh, Mike Mike Williams feels like he is on the side of his career that you don't really want to invest into him in Dynasty. And Devontae Adams is obviously the best piece in this trade. And I would argue that Debo and Ridley are probably close to each other in terms of Dynasty values because like Ridley's he's up there in age now, right? Coming back, he's 27, 28 years old, I think. Maybe, yeah, I think around that age. So he's he'll be kind of dusty before we know it. You said the first was mid to late. Uh, I, I'm going to stick with Devontae Adams and Debo here, Kev. I think you might genuinely just be getting the two best players in the trade there or giving up if you're on the other side of that. Yeah, if you guys are in the chat and you have any you know comments or questions or whatever, I'm, I'm here to answer. Damn, Drake London going all the way to 312. That's insane. That's fucking lunacy. That's lunacy. Let's take a look at the board. What else do we see that's interesting here? I just I just love this second round. We're pushing up all these young wide receivers, and I feel as if the, like the upside, if a JT, if a Saquon, if a Pollard or a Henry hit where they normally perform, they're going to be unbelievably more valuable than, you know, a back-end wide receiver one. Like, what's Alave's best-case scenario? What, 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns, something like that? Even if it's a little bit better than that, and he finishes as, like, the wide receiver seven, not usually, like, game-changing numbers, but... If you have Pollard do what a lot of people think he's going to do, if you have Saquon do his normal fucking 1,700 yards from scrimmage, way more valuable than these young wide receivers that were just like shooting for upside. Right, maybe I got to put my money where my mouth is and take Debo here. Debo's a guy I've been fading for a while. Uh, I do feel like all the way down here, though, might be the time to hop on him. If he falls to me, it does not feel like he's going to fall. I got one player on my mind right now. Oh, uh, Justin Fields. Good pick there. Really good pick there. Jim Shady, you son of a bitch. Okay. So we don't need a running back. We could take wide receiver. There's no tight end that I'm like head over heels in love with right now. I definitely like Terry the most out of the receivers available, right? So I'm going to take Terry. We actually had a question. What's your opinion on Terry McLaurin? How much upside do the commander's offense players really have with Sam Howell getting the start? I mean, I guess the question is like, what were, what was the upside of the, what, what has the upside been of any Washington player over the last three years? Terry McLaurin went for 1,200 yards. He only had five touchdowns. And that's been the reason why he's been so, uh, just kind of disregarded in fantasy. He's averaged uh, 11 and a half, 12 fantasy points a game, basically for four straight years. He's been arguably the most consistent player at like a mid tier basis. And I don't think anyone's arguing that the talent is there to explode. Like Terry McLaurin's numbers are strikingly similar to, I wish I could put a side by side. Okay. Last year, Terry McLaurin, 77 catches, 1,190 yards. T. Higgins, 74 catches, 1,029 yards. 2021, Terry McLaurin, 77 catches, 1,053 yards. T. Higgins, 74 catches, 1,091 yards. Their numbers are strikingly similar like really, really, really similar. And uh, Higgins had seven touchdowns last year, six touchdowns the year before, six touchdowns the year before. Terry's at five, five. So their touchdown numbers aren't even that far apart. I understand. Obviously you want players attached to a Joe Burrow and in this passing offense that moves quickly. But if you're looking at the board, T Higgins went off the board at the three, two and Terry McLaurin's at the four, six. They're going to put up numbers that are extremely similar to each other. Most, um, I think, Terry also had like a wildly high number of inaccurate balls thrown his way. I'm going to pull up some numbers on him real quick. The air yards were there. He just needs more accurate passes thrown his way. He was number four 
in deep targets last year. Number four in deep targets, number 12 overall in unrealized area. Catchable target rate, 70th in the NFL. I, I kind of like Sam Howell, man. I kind of like Sam Howell, and I think he just needs like a little bit of luck to to twist uh, to twist his numbers into, into something more usable and get back in the wide receiver one ring. So I, I'm a fan of Terry. I always will be. He's just too talented, I feel like, to, to really fail. His floor is like relatively high. His floor is good enough to you should feel fine taking him in the fourth. That's kind of the way I look at him. Wide receiver 7 to 17 is so much closer than running back 7 to 17 love the yeah i i think it's like more projectable it's easier to project the wide receivers that are are going to do well like the best players usually end up being the best fantasy players and i think that's why we feel more comfortable with wide receivers and this is a format where we're starting three wide receivers instead of the two running backs so that makes sense and the upside play of like the rb7 is going to score you know 16 points a game where the rb17 is going to score like 12 that gap is so much bigger than the wide receiver to wide receiver but much more Difficult to predict, in my opinion. All right, so we are down at the 5-7, and we have Joe Mixon. I mean, uh, Joe Burrow sitting there. We have a lot of good wide, uh, running back, too. This is, like, this really is, this does feel like the sweet spot for running back. Hard not to like Mixon, hard not to like Dobbins, hard not to even like Madison this far down in the draft, but... Let's uh let's grab Joey B. Let's grab our QB of the future. Let's let's cement the franchise. I got the 102 in my home league, and I'm 99% sure I'm taking Cooper Cup, even if JJ or C Mac are available. Who is being taken at the 101 if JJ is available? I wouldn't take Cup over JJ. Running backs ripping off Joe Mixon, J.K. Dobbins, Damian Pierce. Uh. And again, you know, if you are new to the underdog platform, this is the single best way to prepare for your fantasy league. Three dollar drafts, five dollar drafts, ten dollar drafts. You can play in their tournament games, which are fucking awesome too. Guaranteed prize pools. If you're into that kind of thing, I use these as a way to prepare. And you're buying into every single league. So the ADP and the picks are actually like super sharp, gets you super ready. You understand the trends of the fantasy drafts by the time the end of the summer hits. It's wonderful. You draft your team. You don't have to set lineups, no trades, no waiver wire. You come back, and if you had the best team drafted, then you win. Go download the Underdog app, sign up using promo code BDG, and you will get a 100% deposit match on your deposit. Whatever you throw down, you're going to get it double. You're going to get it double. I'm assuming Chase going 101 on that scenario. Yeah, I would take Jefferson there if that happens. I would take Jefferson there if that happens. If Jefferson goes first, I would be totally fine going with the Cooper Cup. Ah, damn. I really wanted George Kittle there. Really wanted Georgie K. Georgie. Oh, shit. We're on the clock. Okay. Wow. These Seattle wide receiver ADPs just keep moving up and up and up. JSN, Miles Sanders, Mike Evans, Traylon Burks. I really like Mike Evans and Traylon Burks here. Uh, I'm going to take... I'm going to take old reliable. Evans is just a dude I, I kind of feel like we're overthinking here. 1,000 yards, nine straight seasons. I know Baker's not good, but he's not he, He's not going to absolutely ruin Mike Evans. Trying to go with a more even build here. I'm usually hammering wide receiver for seven rounds. Let's see what the team looks like right now. Jim Shade, Jaden Nader. So annoying every time I click a team, every time someone drafts. Fields, JT, Mixon, A.J. Brown, Lockett, and Mark Andrews. Dude, I really like your team. I think it's really, really good. Very strong. You have like you have really good players at every position. It's sexy. The real the real gym sex. We eat dinner day. Yeah, we did. We actually just got some. We got a, I got a friend in the office visiting. Adam, he's in our Discord. Destination Devi. Uh, he's at, I think he's streaming in the studio right now. Ordered some Mexican. Salt the goat. Had a bowl. It's chicken, lettuce, rice, beans, fajita peppers. Why do you think I'm sweating so much? Every time I eat, I sweat. So I don't eat. Appreciate you, Stevie. Yeah, ATM's here. All right, so after I took Evans, Burks went off the board immediately afterwards, and you have George Pickens, Kyle Pitts, Miles Sanders, JSN, Trevor Lawrence, Dallas Goddard. It's it's really f funny watching, like, the evolution of these drafts and watching the trends of ADP throughout the summer where, like, Deontay Johnson and George Pickens continue to, like, swap spots. I've seen drafts where Pickens goes 10 spots higher than Johnson, and then you have a draft like this where Deontay Johnson goes 7, 8 spots higher than George Pickens. And um, I... I'm very on board with Johnson over Johnson had extremely high target rates in each of the last four years had a high target rate, especially against single man coverage. Um, while Kenny Pickett was under center and had an insanely high end zone target share as well last year. So if anything like broke right, even he would have had a much better, a little bit more luck. Come on. Hey, let's go. I have, I have like no shares of Kadarius Tony. I really don't like taking him in the seventh round, but I like to diversify the portfolio. The upside case for Tony is that he was super good on limited touches last year. He obviously came to the chiefs midway through the season. So there's got to be a lot more structure to his game this year, right? And there's got to be a lot more structure to his game this year. They got to get a more 
uh, efficiently involved in the offense. Like he's got to be more organized in the offense. They actually have to, you know, run an offense with him as a primary player in it. And I think they'll have, you know, they have the entire offseason to make sure that happens. And this is the most creative. It's like the most creative minds in football between Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes that get to play with the most unique, one of the most unique weapons in football in Kadarius Tony. When will we start seeing some redraft drafts? Uh, I don't know. I'm honestly not really allowed to do drafts on other platforms while I'm signing with Underdog. So I try to give you as much, I try to give you as much like redraft consumable content during these best ball drafts. I think most of it, a lot of it, I think is um, a lot of it is actionable in regular redraft leagues. I'll probably make a video comparing the ADPs across channels, though, where like the biggest differences are between like Underdog, ESPN, you know, and all those platforms. That might be a cool video. Nick, what happened to the dynasty with you, sexy and Tony? What dynasty? What do you mean? We are a dynasty. Goddard or Pitts? I don't know. I kind of want to take Goddard there. I feel like Goddard's like one of the more underrated players in fantasy right now, too. No one, no one wants Goddard because they're like bored by him. But I feel like. Last year down the stretch, once that offense like started getting going and he was back from being hurt, Goddard was such a player. And he's been so good. We've been waiting. We were waiting for Ertz to leave for fucking ever. And then he finally did and Goddard went nuts. And now we don't want him because he's not like super athletic. But Pitts is scary, bro. I don't I don't really want to fucking grab Kyle Pitt. Four wide receivers. Do we look at the tight end yet? I don't know. Elijah Moore, Dalvin Cook. Like this is insane. Imagine telling yourself before last year that this would be the two choices you're looking at. Can't take Elijah Moore over fuck. Or Javante Williams. Uh, Should have taken Alvin Kamara. Whatever. We took Elijah Moore. I have no Elijah Moore shares either. So uh yeah, I mean listen, like Pitts feels like he's still a year off because the offense. What is what is Ritter gonna be this year? How 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 many pass attempts are they really going to throw? How many of them are going to go to Bijan? How many of them are going to fucking Drake London? I don't know. I feel like Pitts is going to average like four to five targets a game. Although they might be more accurate, I, he'll be he'll be way better this year than he was. It, you can't be any fucking worse than he was last year. The guy at, literally had like 350 receiving. It's actually impressive how bad. But he had the highest un, uncatchable target rate of any tight end last year in like fantasy. So he'll be a lot better. I I still feel like I feel more comfortable with Goddard being a part of such a high flying offense and one that you know is going to like live in the reds you think justin Ro already no already no on just rashi rice and but no nope i think rashi rice could be a playmaker definitely not. you guys said there was gonna be some kind of contest to be in a dynasty with all three of you and possibly no yeah we're working on it don't worry about it we didn't say it was gonna happen before july it'll happen when it happens you know delvin went at the seven gonna be the fucking jets starting running oh man our fuck intern tiktok is going crazy you said it would be in July. Yeah, well, it's fucking six days into July. Relax. Well, I want you to eat something. You sound hungry. Thoughts on Jamison Williams? Uh, he's he's not a dude that I'm really looking to draft unless unless it's a tournament style game because the suspension plus what that offense realistically is, they're not really like a downfield offense, you know. And he should see limited targets. Um, I like Jamison Williams. But I don't know if I want to stash him for six weeks. You know, I don't know if I want to ha have to sit on him on my redraft roster for that long. So I'm playing a tournament I and I end up drafting Jared Goff or something like that. I'm, I'm OK with it, but I'm not overly excited about James Williams right now. I would I would be pretty excited. Let's take a look and see after I make my pick where I think he'd be drafted had he not gotten. I would I, I, I would be excited about him. Anthony Richardson. So we're all just out on Alvin Kamara, huh? He's just done. He's finito. I haven't taken A.J. Dillon. In, I don't think in any draft. Maja Piran. I'm going to take Kamara. I'm going to keep taking Kamara. I'm just going to keep scooping him up. 9-7, nine, 9-8, nine, 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 every fucking draft. That's my guy right there. I probably should have taken Tyler Boyd to stack with Joe Burrow, but you know what? That's showbiz, baby. What is this tweet? This is why I can't be on Twitter. This is why I can't be on Twitter. The first tweet that I see on my timeline, Britney Spears was allegedly slapped in Vegas by Victor Wembanyam, whatever the fucking first overall pick's name is, by Victor W. Security, who backhanded her in the face after she tapped the NBA player on the back for a photo. Why is that on my news? It doesn't make me want to go to threads. Instagram threads, that shit is so... so I'm usually the first person to tell people to hop onto new social platforms, but threads has... There's literally no value prop on that platform that Twitter doesn't already have, and Twitter already has the people. There's just no chance that has staying power based on, on what the product it is right now, on the product that it is. At the Kelsey, what you say? Did Tony look at our game? I, I don't I don't know. He didn't bring it up to me today. Yo, mid-Loki, or 
fucking drummer. What are you doing? Five running backs, four wide receivers. It's like I, rem I remember my first fucking fantasy team. It's whatever the shiny prize at the top of the list is, that's who you take. Oh yeah, let's look at James. I think if Jameson Williams never got suspended, he would be going. He'd be going right here at the six seven turn. I think he'd be going around where JSN is going. I think he'd be right here in the mix with JSN, Pacheco, Jahan Dotson. That feels about right. I think he should be going ahead of George Pickens if he did not get suspended. Uh, George Pickens went too high for me personally in this draft but i think this is this is the range around the six seven turn are we on the air do we get some chiggy action actually i kind of have to because of the video that i released tomorrow yeah fuck it we'll take chigs so chiggy depending on when you're watching this you might have already watched this video but uh, i just put out like a tight end centric focus video and chiggy ranked so highly in so many different statistics last year yards per out run yards after the catch per target yards per reception contested catch rate he was like top five in all of them. now I will say those have not proven to be extremely predictable or extremely, why can't I think of the word? My brain stops working at night, man. That's why I don't, those numbers do not typically end up being predictive. That's the fucking word. We've seen it happen with Jonah Smith. We've powered, like every time a, a player gets a really small sample size, the tight end position, and he does really well, I, I feel like he ends up flopping. He's a flop job. Kind of feels like Chiggy, but he's also super young. Played really, really well last year, so I'm, I'm willing to take some shots on him. Big board this bitch. Put me in the top right. I mean, Britney Spears got backhanded. Tony is worse at responding to messages than even you. That's, that's a pretty fucking high bar, too. He doesn't respond to my messages either, if that makes you feel any better. And he works for me. After Chiggy, we got B-Rob, Romeo Dobbs, Kirk Cousins, Damian Harris, Odell, Devon A. Chains, Zay Jones, Dan, a bunch of Jones brothers, Jacoby Myers, Aaron Rodgers, Khalil Herbert, and we are one pick away. Only one pick away. Grab another tight end. No, we've got five wides. We've got three running backs. I've built a team where I can kind of go whatever direction I want right now. I think I'm going to chill with quarterbacks. No one I super duper love. I wonder what the move is. You know, I, I got a weird move right now. I've got a weird move I think I want to pull. I don't typically handcuff in best ball, but I have a feeling either Alvin Kamara is going to be an unbelievably good value where I got him at pick 103, or Kendrick Miller is going to have a fucking breakout year and break the slate. So I'm going to take both of them and see what happens. Let's get spicy here. I haven't I haven't got Kendra in a while. Now he's going in the 11th round. I feel like it's a little a little early for my liking, but you know what? Let's get weird. What is your schedule like? How much time do you put into research, converting data into info and creating vids or written stuff? It's literally all I do all day. Ever. That is my job. Got in here at, I don't know, maybe 9 a.m. today. I'll leave it 9 tonight. Today we filmed two hours worth of TikToks. I filmed uh, a YouTube video for tomorrow. I probably researched for... I don't know, three, four hours, three hours, maybe to make the video. That video will end up being like 16 minutes long. So you could do the math there. I will work on a thumbnail. I actually have to do the thumbnail for this video that you're watching right now after. And I'm going to do the thumbnail for tomorrow's video too. So that's all I do all day. Kendra, Darnell, Greg Dolchich. I, I don't have a read on Greg Dolchich, man. I feel like a lot of people kind of like him as a breakout this year. And he did okay last year, but... I don't know. Sean Payton's first move was to bring over uh, Adam Troutman from the Saints when he signed with the Broncos. That makes me like feel a little bit weird. Makes me feel a little bit uneasy there, right? Because he's obviously was coaching him back when he was with the Saints. So that's 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 kind of a little sus right there when it comes to Dolce. It's only one call away. I cannot wait to shower, go to bed, wake up, and do it all over again for the next 10 years. That's what it's like. Clock. We on the air? Should we take another rookie back and tank? Nah. Oh, someone asked uh, who my favorite uh, Carolina receiver is. Well, I'll have to make that choice right now because there's Jonathan Mingo, there's Adam Thielen. I actually wouldn't take. I think I'll take Alec Pierce here. It kind of feels like if Jonathan Mingo has the year that Alec Pierce had last year, 600 yards, we'd probably be like kind of happy about it. And I expect Alec Pierce to take a little bit of a step up this year. Um, So... I will take Alec Pierce here. I don't necessarily love him, but he was really, really, really good in Matt Harmon's reception perception, surprisingly. He was a good route runner. I thought he was only like a winner down the field, but it looks looks like he's, he actually might be a, a better player than I give him credit. Is it realistic to think that Uncle Lenny or Hunt go somewhere that doesn't completely screw up another RB's value? Because I have a feeling they're going to absolutely tank. I think Zeke is way more likely to tank someone's value. I've been saying this for months. I think Zeke like still has Lenny. I, I could see Hunt ruining something. Lenny just Lenny feels done to me. Lenny feels like super. Lenny feels like someone who will go somewhere and people will be like, oh my God, he's ruining their value and then could be completely phased out by like week three. Lenny feels like a, he feels like a cautionary tale already. Kareem Hunt, I feel like can probably still play. Surprise, surprise he couldn't really get it done in Cleveland anymore last year. Like knowing already having a ton of success, which does make me weary, like, how can he not have success last year despite getting volume and running behind a good offensive line and already having success in that scheme? That That's a little bit weird, um, but I could see 
I could see Kareem Hunt going somewhere being okay. Fournette seems shot. Kareem Hunt seems like he's he'll be annoying. Zeke feels like he could actually be. been holding Terrace Marshall for like 19 years. He's like not even 19. Terrace Marshall's like seven. I feel like Terrace Marshall could be kind of good this year. Like, I feel like he could end up being the wide receiver too. So that wouldn't surprise me at all. Oh, we're almost on the clock. Joey B. Joey Baby. We're back right now. Could take a QB. I probably need a QB. We do have we have, we got a lot of New Orleans. Maybe we'll take Derek Carr here. I do don't I, I do not like the fall off here. I think I think Brock Purdy's kind of gonna be a fucking player, bro. That locker room loves Brock Purdy. They're they're all in on the Purdinator. I think I might I think I might be getting there soon. Yeah, we'll go Derek Carr here. Uh, I, he's good enough to run an offense, and they have good weapons. Chris Olave, uh, Thomas as the two, Jawan Johnson, a good a good running back group. I've I feel like there's not, uh, he can't be that bad, right? Their offensive line is good too. Like Derek Carr will be a server. Who's your fifth best free agent running back? Assuming Cook, Hunt, Zeke, and Lenny are one, four. That's a great fucking question. Let's, uh, let's actually go over to Spocher. Who is available? Kenyon Drake, Chris Carson. No, Jamal Williams already signed. What are we doing? 2023. There's like nobody good available. Stinks on the running back market outside of those guys. Mike Boone's all right. Yeah, I don't even, I'm not even going to put something on the record with that question, dude. Calvin Tyler Jr., he's my RB5. DJ Char, yeah, here's the thing with the Carolina receivers. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if every single one of them, Mingo, Chark, Terrace Marshall, Adam Thielen, all finished between 500 and 750 yards. It wouldn't surprise me if any of them were the wide receiver. If, if you put like gun to my head, statistically, who's, you know, if I had to rank them one through four yardage wise, I think I would put, I think I'll go Chark, Thielen, uh, Mingo, Marshall, maybe Marshall, Mingo. Marshall, that's how I would probably rank it. I'm a fan of J-Rob, but confused why I really, because he just, he doesn't have it anymore, man. I, I, I talked about this a lot. Like he's been on three teams in the last calendar month. Like, that's not a good sign. He just, he doesn't have the explosiveness. He just doesn't have it. When the Jets got to, like, when the Jags had him, saw him run for big games and then still released him, that was kind of like, Jets picked him up, didn't play him at all, goes to the Pats. Like, it, you just have a short leash when you sign running backs for, when you sign running backs for fucking 200 grand. Like, their leash, if, if they just don't show the explosiveness, like, he's gone. They gone. Got our second QB. Uh, Do we need another wide receiver? We like DPJ. We need some tight ends as well. Yeah, let's go, let's go with the wide receiver here because I'm looking at the picks in between my picks and the next one and some of them might be you guys in the chat right now but the majority of these teams two tight ends two tight ends two 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 so only one team has one tight end now my next pick so i'm hoping i can get there are a lot of guys that i still am like comfortable with at the tight end position right now everett juan johnson sam laporta so i'd be cool with any of these guys still uh getting picked by me who will emerge out of the giants wide receiver room same honestly a lot of the same from like what i said with the giants with carolina in Carolina with the Giants. I think it'll be uh, Isaiah Hodgins or Paris Campbell. I think it'll be one of those two lead the team in targets. But, you know, Wandell's there. By team, I mean uh, the wide receiver group. Darren Waller will probably. If I'm drafting, I would probably take Hodgins first. Hodgins is probably my favorite guy there. Then Campbell. Wandell coming off the ACL does not really entice me. Darius Slayton had a good year last year for them, but now he's kind of like buried on the depth chart. You in the Scott Fishbowl? Yeah, unfortunately. I never signed up for it, but he just invites me every year. I'm not, I'm not like trying to flex. I genuinely don't. I'm not trying to add. I'll, I'll donate every year to the charity, but like I'm not. I don't want to add more fantasy, especially ones that I'm not like paying attention to and competitive in, you know? So yes, I, I'm in it, but yes, I'm in it. Why cunt? It's only one call away. Dooby dooby doop pop. I'm going to pass away. How the fuck does Jameson sleep? What, Kelsey? Because I said the C word. I don't care. I don't care. I never gave a fuck. Oh, this is such a good stack. Derek Carr and Juwan Johnson. Let's go. Sarah, don't take him from me, please. Oh, he's the top of the guy on the board. She's going to time out and take... Oh, let's go. <laughs> I am I am so fucking good at this. Scares me sometimes. Terrified of myself. Tell the intern to come say hi. What are you going to do? He's just fucking hover behind me like a creepazoid? I'm not going to put him through that. Tell you what, I don't know if you've seen the latest TikTok, but they dominated on it. The interns showed the fuck out on our trivia. Yeah, they were they were balling. Pulling out fucking 19 fucking 96 Houston Oilers Rookie of the Year. Like, what? 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 Where the fuck is my next pick? Come on. All right, so here's the team so far. We got Diggs, Saquon, Josh Jacobs. Terry, run TMC. Has anyone ever called him that before? Run TMC? Because if not, that was fucking electric. Joe Burrow, Mike Evans, Kadarius Tony, Elijah Moore, Alvin Kamara, Chiggy, Kendra Miller, Alec Pierce, Derek Carr, DPJ, Jawan Johnston. Don't hate it. Don't hate it. What do we got? Seven wideouts, four running backs, two tight ends, two QBs. Where are we looking here? I've been drafting way too much 
Um, I can't say it with Jim Shady on the clock. He's a son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Oh, very nice. I've been drafting so much. Jeff. I just keep thinking about the running back room and how they're not going to use a chain or most or it has to be Jeff. I genuinely think Miami might. Miami is going to be a problem in the AF. I think they're going to compete with since. All right, we got two rounds left. If you are still here with us, go sign up for Underdog. Come draft with us. We are drafting throughout the Discord. We drop links in there for you guys to draft with us. We didn't do it on this one. Relax, but we will in the future. Join the Discord. Sign up on Underdog. Use promo code BDG when you do so. And hit the thumbs up button. I saw that. Someone just came in with a flying thumbs up from the top ropes. Do you guys hear that? You guys hear the fan in the, in the mic? I think I'm going to sue the building. This is inhumane. I'm done with our... <laughs> okay, that's fair. Uh, these, Yeah, these last couple rounds. Here's where we're looking. Where did Zeke go? 16-1. Okay. All right, drummer. These last couple rounds, I end up taking a lot of the same guys. I don't really diversify in the last, uh, last few rounds. I feel like the chance of you hitting on anybody is just so fucking slim down here that you might as well either take guys that you know are going to be on the field, like... Hayden Hurst, at tight end, is going to be on the field for 70 to 80% of the snaps. Whereas a guy like, I don't know, Tyler Conklin. Why the fuck is Tyler Conklin going ahead of Hayden? What are we doing here? Darius Slayton might not even touch the field. You know, there's a lot of guys that might not touch the field where I feel like at these rounds you might as well grab dudes that you know are going to play. Do I double down here, quarterback and a tight end? No, I can grab one of them. I can grab Sam Howell. I kind of like Sam Howell. And I have Terry McLaurin. So that'd be a cool stack. But I do like Hayden Hurst as another tight end here. I do like Trey McBride. I don't have a lot of Trey McBride. I'm going to grab, grab Trey McBride. Nick, when's the next Twitter space? Ah, damn. I've been meaning to do those. I've just, uh, with me going away on vacation last week or two weeks ago and then having the intern start this week, I've been so fucking busy that I haven't had really time to do any extra content about content unfortunately and interns will be in tomorrow and i'm filming big content tomorrow with jack uh so unlikely that i'll be able to do it this week but next week we're going to start back up on our bullshit q a's twitter spaces i'll have more freedom next week oh yeah 18th round is a likely feels great if he's there i agree the video that's going live on the channel tomorrow i i i went in on that i'm saragon the draft what do you think dude i thought you i thought saragon was sarah like a woman like a female, and I just assumed she wasn't in my audience so I could say things when she was on the clock. That was both sexist and dumb of me. I just, like, figured she wasn't in the chat so I could be like, oh, this is the guy I want, you know? And then they wouldn't pick it, and it's been you this whole fucking time, Owen Stevens. You two-bit motherfucker. I'm gonna hold you to it. I hope you do. I hope I hope you fucking do. I hope you hold me to it just like the Dynasty draft in June. Are we in the 18th round? Yes, we have officially entered the promised land. Oh, you took Hayden Hurst. That's fine. Who do we want to take with our last pick? Upside receivers. I kind of like Puka here. Um, I like, it's like impossible to like Allen Robinson, but like, what if? Unless, like Michael Wilson a lot. That's probably about it. I'll get one of them. I'll get one of them. There's only two guys left. What are you going to do here, Fraud Shady? The real Fraud Shady. There he goes. He took likely. I'll take Puka here. Take Pookie, baby. All right, we have to We have to end this, this piece of shit that we're calling content right now. So you have the whole team here. We'll go from top to bottom. Diggs, Saquon, Jacobs, Terry, Joey B., Mike Evans, Kadarius Tony, Elijah Moore, Alvin Kamara, Chiggy, Kendra, Alec Pierce, Derek Carr, Diamond Peoples-Jones, Jawan Johnson, Jeff Wilson, Trey McBride, Puka. I like. I feel like I've been drafting pretty well this off season. You know, no one else think feels that way, but I feel that way about myself, and that's for real. What is important, right? Right, guys. Um. All right. Yeah. Well, that that's gonna that's gonna wrap up the video. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Of course, beautiful sweaty Thursday evening. If you have not signed up for Underdog yet, make sure you do so and use promo code BDGE. They're going to double. You heard that right. Double whatever you put down on the platform. If you use our code, I'm telling you it's the best way to prep for your fantasy draft. I will see you all tomorrow for our favorite tight ends to draft after round eight or some shit. I don't know what the title is yet. Just go. Love you. Bye.